Okay, so have a good look at the timetable. You can see that you have your classes at particular times of the day. So you've either got a morning slot or you've got an afternoon slot. Just have a look at the time that the class starts. So the morning classes start at 9. Not 10 past 9, not quarter past 9, definitely not half past 9. People who are here on visas, we have to be very careful and we have to make sure that you attend every class on time. So you know, we keep a record of all of that, so it's really important. And then in the morning you finish at 1.30. Don't worry, it's not four and a half hours. It's two hours, half an hour break, and then another two hours. Okay. And then if you've got an afternoon class, you can see that the class starts at 1.30 and finishes at 6. And again, you may think, oh, 6, that's quite late. Don't worry, it's completely normal. Many of you who are studying master's courses, you will have classes in the evening. Okay, and the evening is until 8. The reason for that is that many students work. They work during the day, um, and so they, the classes are in the evening. Compulsory modules are usually in the day. Optional modules often are in the evening. Also, it's a huge university. There are thousands of people, and we have to you know, fit everybody into the, the timetable. So 6 o'clock is quite early. Some modules finish at 8. So, um, underneath, next to the, the time, you will have the name of your teacher. And then you will have the module number. It starts with you. Okay? This is important because you will have to put this information on your assignments. So you need to know those module numbers. Then you will have the name of the module. And then you will have the room. So, if you have uh, RO, this is Red Oak, which is across the road down the hill. If you have G, this is Gibbs, which is behind this building. And if you have JHBB, that's this building. Okay. Can you repeat that? Mm -hmm. RO is Red Oak, which is across the road and down the hill. So G is for Gibbs, which is just behind the JHB building. And then JHB is this building here. I think everybody is in just these three buildings. And if it's got five, so if it's G5, that's the fifth floor. It, uh, that's the Gibbs. And if it's JHB4 or JHB3 or JHB2, that's the, the floor level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is anybody in Snow or Kennedy? Snow. Okay, Snow again is in this building uh, upstairs oh. on the top floor. <laughs> it's exactly above this um, room here. So this is Kennedy. Oh. So everybody is in here on... Friday. W? WR, okay. Willow. Willow. Willow is before Red Oak. So again, across the road, go down the hill. First you have the Willow buildings and then below you have the Red Oak buildings. FHG. 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 Which level are you? Um, don't worry about this room <laughs> because you will start your class in snow. Can you see? So from in the snow room from 1.30 to 3.30 and then you all can go together to FHG. The reason I won't explain it to you is it is quite a difficult room to find. Okay? And I get lost myself every time I go there. So. Okay. so everybody should have two in the morning, two in the afternoon, and then the lecture program on Friday. Okay? Any questions about the timetable? Uh, I saw there are 
uh, third week in uh, schedule, mm -hmm. and uh, we start week one or week seven. You're you're actually starting in week seven. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's a very good question. Okay. So let's move on. So, what are you going to study in academic writing? Well, these are just some of the things. So you're going to learn how to write essays and reports. But also, very importantly, academic writing is not just the writing. There are lots of other things which happen before you start writing and after you finish start writing and while you're writing. So you'll learn about brainstorming, about planning, how to organise texts, how to edit your work and how to draft, which means you do one, you give it to the tutor, you get feedback from the tutor and you use the feedback to write a better draft. Okay, This is drafting. You'll learn how to carry out some research. Remember you're at university now, not high school. Okay, So everything you do has to be researched. Of course we're interested in your opinion but it has to be supported by research. So we'll help you um, to carry out and to learn how to use this research in your writing appropriately. Very important, you'll need to develop an academic style, not an informal style. Um, and also how to communicate your ideas accurately. So learning how to reduce the number of errors that you make and what typical errors you make and how to look out for those errors. And also there will be a lot of self and peer evaluation. So when you move to your undergraduate or your postgraduate courses, you won't have your English language teachers there to help you and say, oh, look, look at this mistake here. Okay? You will have to learn how to do that yourself and also how to help each other and look at each other's work and help each other. Okay, listening and speaking, so we will do lots of discussion work and seminar work. Um, you will um, give an individual or perhaps a group presentation on a topic, again, that you have researched. So not uh, look at my lovely photographs of my holiday last year or this is my family. Okay, so again, you will be doing presentations on your field, your subject, and using research to support that. You'll be listening to lectures, taking notes and answering comprehension questions and again developing an academic style for when you're speaking. A little bit of a focus on pronunciation and intonation where we can and also more self and peer evaluation. So we will record your video, your, your presentations. We will give you that. You will go and do a self evaluation. You will watch your partners do their presentations and you will give them feedback on that presentation. Okay, level two, you will be doing the um, academic language development module. This is basically a grammar and vocabulary module. You'll be doing grammar, obviously. You'll be looking at error analysis and how to self-correct. Looking at academic vocabulary and learning how to record vocabulary using a vocabulary notebook. You'll be writing some reflective journals where we ask you to tell us what you think about different topics. Again, continuing to develop your academic style and some dictionary use as well. And this module has a very, very close connection to your other modules, particularly your writing <coughs> module. So this teacher and the writing teacher speak to each other. Okay, all the teachers speak to each other, but particularly these two modules. Oh, this, these students need more help with this, so then you'll study this in the academic language development module. Okay, level three and four, your IELTS is a little bit higher, so we haven't got time to do an academic development module. You're going to be doing research, so we'll be looking at how to approach research how to find and how to evaluate sources, how to do things by yourself. So your teacher will say, go and research something. How do you do that? Where do you start? What do you do? 
um, thinking about and designing a research project, collecting and then analysing some data, and then how you can present that in a number of different ways, so in a written way and also in an oral way. And again, self and peer evaluation. This module um, is often very new for people. So some people, they come from a, a, an education system where they've never really had to do research. So some of you will say, this is the most difficult module. And it is. But at the end of the course, most of you will say, this was the best module. <laughs> okay? So please, please, please be prepared for challenge here but it's a good challenge. Keep talking to your teacher and also keep talking to the other students if you're not sure what you need to do. And think about where you will be at the end rather than, oh, I'm finding it really difficult now. Reading, well, we will read lots of different types of text. We'll take notes, we'll do summaries and answer comprehension questions. Um, we will analyse how texts are organised, because if we understand how texts are organised, this makes them easier to read. We will also be reading critically, and we will be thinking critically. Turn to your partner. What does critical thinking and critical reading mean? Again, this might be a new concept for you, but it's very important in UK higher education. What does it mean? Tell your partner. Two minutes. Saturday and Sunday, and then we have 
a Monday and a Tuesday, and the university is closed. So normally, you have your classes on Monday and Tuesday. But because this is your last week when you will be having your tests and your assessments, we will have to do those tests earlier. So we are only having lectures in weeks one to three. So weeks four and five, we will make up the assignments that you miss because of the bank holiday. So nice, we have a long weekend, but problem because we have to rearrange the assignments. You will do some activities in your listening and speaking class to help you prepare for the lecture and maybe you will do some activities after the lecture to discuss the content of the lecture. These are real lectures given by real lecturers at Oxford Brookes University and they're on uh, different subjects. Very, very important because they give you extra practice of listening and speaking and they give you the chance to meet all the university English students. Because if you're just in your group, sometimes you don't see the other students. So once a week, we all meet together as 95 students. And that's nice, that's sociable. Okay, I mentioned the word assignments, so let's talk about them. You have your final assignments obviously in weeks five and six. Okay. Most of weeks five and six will be assessments. So you will have different assessments on different days. Don't worry about those now, your tutors will tell you about those next week. But in weeks one to four, to help you, to help you to prepare for these final assignments, we will do formative assessments. The word formative just means practice or training. So for example, in academic writing, in week six, you have to write an essay. So in week three, you will do a practice essay and your tutor will give you feedback. So this is what we mean by formative assignments. And again, your teachers will tell you about those next week. But six weeks is a really, really short time. And if I can give you some advice, my advice is get organised, plan. So next week when you receive your schedules, get organised. Use a di diary or maybe you like Google Calendar, I don't know. But just plan when you have your different assignments and assessments. The formative assignments don't carry any marks. Your tutor, your tutor will give you a mark, but this mark doesn't count to your final. So you could have a complete disaster and get zero in the formative assignments. It doesn't matter. Okay? It's about learning by making mistakes. And then the summative assignments are the final ones. Okay. Let's talk about homework. So, I said that your classes are four hours. What are you going to do the rest of the time? Don't worry, you will be really busy. So we would expect you, if you study for four hours, to do about three or four hours of self-study out of class. This may be lots and lots of different things. It depends on your level and it depends on your class. But there's two types. Homework, which is compulsory, so your teacher is asking you to do that because you need it for the next week, or you need it for your assignment. And then there is self-study. So many students complain, Lisa, Lisa, we have so much homework, we have so much homework, it's too much, I don't know what to do. Actually, when I sit down with a student and discuss it, the reality is they have some homework and then they have some self-study. Turn to your partner. What's the difference, do you think, between homework and self-study? Tell your partner. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, so maybe, maybe you said something like this, which is the teacher will say, there are some extra exercises on this, 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 and this. And you think, oh, wow, I have to do all that? No, you don't. You have to decide for yourself, what do I need to do? Do I have problems with this? So I need to do this. Okay? Or the teacher will say to you, you have a problem with this, you need to do this. Okay? You need to make some decisions and take some responsibility. So look at the feedback that your teacher gives you on your homework or your assignments, your formative assignments, and then see if there is an extra self-study that you need to do. But it is very important, please don't think that, oh, I don't have to do any of the self-study, I'm okay. That's a dangerous way to, way to think, because the homework is not enough, it's not three or four hours. The homework may be two hours or three hours, and then you will be expected to do some extra self-study. If you want more, just ask. Okay? No problem. No problem if you want more. Plus, we have a virtual learning environment for every module. And on this virtual learning environment, there are lots and lots of other self-study activities. In fact, too much. But it's there for you to use as a resource. Okay? So, you'll need to select the materials which are most useful to you. Uh, where would you recommend to study if you want someplace quiet? Um, I'd recommend the library. Okay. Um, it's quite quiet at the moment because there are no undergraduates here. Yeah. And in fact there aren't many postgraduates either. Um, the only problem is, is that there are a lot of the language school students. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but they're not allowed in the library. Okay. Um, Great. And if you go to the top floor of the library, you can come outside at the top of the forum and there's a big study space there. But you will find your own little, yeah. little space <laughs> in the university. Yeah. And at the weekends, the language students are not here, they go on trips. So the forum is actually also a nice place um, to study. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Let's talk about results, because this is very often different in different countries. So, an A plus or an A is 70 to 100%, work of distinction. B plus B, 60 to 69, very good work. C plus C, 50 to 59, this is good work. And this is the university average. So the university average is about 59.9999, okay, nearly 60%. D, D plus, 40 to 49. D, 40% is a pass. Okay? Again, that might be different in your universities. Somebody said to me a couple of weeks ago, in my university, 80% is a pass. Okay? So it's different. Um, and below 39 is a, is a fail. We won't talk about that. But 40%, we'd like you to get more than 40%, because 40% is just a pass. And it sort of gives perhaps the wrong impression to your faculty. So we're, we're trying to aim for 50 to 59. Okay? That's the kind of university average. That's where we would all like you to be. Now, you're not doing maths or sciences where it's possible to get 100%. Of course, we use the full range of marks, but most people would not get more than 70, 75, 80. That's about the top, the top marks that we give, okay? So again, that might be different for you because you're used to receiving 80, 85, 90, or 95. But um, here, that's probably the, the top marks that we, that we give. Again, think about, I know that you're all very, very intelligent, that's why you're here. You've got the top marks in your country, that's why you're here. But that doesn't always transfer to here. You're studying in a different country, different culture, different education systems, different language. 
and so sometimes some of your marks may be a little bit lower than you are hoping for, but we can try to see how we can improve them. And the important thing is not the mark, it's the feedback, because the feedback then can help you get a better mark. I had a student last week who said to me, Lisa, I'm not happy with my mark. I said, okay, no problem. Have you looked at the feedback? No. Okay, so I got my tipex and I crossed out the mark and I said, go and have a look at the feedback and then come and complain about your mark. So it's again a different kind of way of thinking. Um, please also, just a little warning, that all of your marks are very carefully marked. We're all experienced and professionals. Um, they're also checked by other tutors, so my marking is checked by another tutor. And also, we have an external examiner. So this is an examiner from another university, the University of Leicester. We send her some of your work and she looks and she decides if she thinks that that is a fair mark. So, again, this maybe is different in other cultures. The idea of negotiating marks, it doesn't work. Okay? There is an official complaint process. If you really want to complain about your mark, no problem. We can tell you about that. But the idea of negotiating marks um, is not uh, appropriate. I just want to quickly tell you about mitigating circumstances. Earlier on, I talked about life happens. So most people will pass this course, no problem. But life happens. Some things happen. Um, they are beyond our control. If something happens and it is beyond your control, then we have a process where you can apply for extra time. Maybe another week, maybe another month. Um, that the key to this is beyond your control. So if you miss an assignment or a test because you overslept, this is not beyond your control. You were able to control this, so you will get zero. But if something happened, you had an accident, or a couple of years ago we had lots of snow in the winter, and so the university was closed, this is beyond your control. You can't control it, so everybody gets extra time to do their assignments. If this happens to you, then obviously you will be able to talk to me or your teachers or your academic advisors or Miriam and we will be able to help you to take you through the process to apply, it's not automatic, to apply for extra time. The only problem for you is, do you remember I said at the end we only have two weeks? So this is the problem, if you need extra time and you need a new visa, and the course starts on September the 26th, it doesn't leave very much time for mitigating circumstances. So we advise you to try your best, where possible, to do the assignments on time. Okay? But if anybody needs more help about that, then you can come and see us about it. You all get a certificate at the end of your course. Um, this certificate is sent to your address on your PIP page, so it's very important that your PIP page has the correct address. If you want your address, your certificate sent here, no problem, or if you want your certificate sent to your home address, that's fine. Um, it's about three months after the end of this course, and it's a normal Oxford Brookes University certificate. So, I talked to you about the virtual learning environment. It's called Moodle. Moodle. Has anybody used Moodle before? Maybe? Yes, I can see people nodding. Maybe you've used different names of virtual learning environment. But your teachers will use it every lesson because they will have PowerPoints. There will be links to your homework and your self-study. There will be samples of essays or examples, there will be assignment details and feedback sheets, 
everything, everything will be there. So it is important during your first week that you familiarise yourself with your Moodle site. You will have five. One for writing, one for reading, one for listening and speaking, one for academic language development or research, and then one for university English altogether. This is the login page for, so you use your username and your password and then this will enter you into the virtual learning environment. You can use it at home or you can use it here on campus. Okay, module handbooks. So, next week your tutors will give you all of your course materials, all of your module handbooks. Uh, maybe then week to week they will give you more photocopies, but everything will be contained in a book like this. Okay? And you will have different colours for each day. <coughs> Hopefully, it should be easy to remember. So, for example, Monday is purple, Tuesday is red, Wednesday is orange, and Thursday is blue. But usually, every day there is somebody who says, oh, I forgot my book. I say, how did you forget your book? But uh, maybe they didn't realise about the colours. Equipment. Students ask, what do they need? Well, you can ask your tutors, but perhaps you need to do some shopping this weekend. You need notebooks, you need pencils, pens, highlighters, um, plastic folders, maybe even a dictionary, maybe a little paper dictionary, or make sure that you have access to an e electronic dictionary on your mobile phone or your tablet or your, your laptop, whichever you prefer to use. Um, so if you haven't got that, maybe do a little bit of shopping this weekend. Shall we bring laptop into classes? Um, or is it only for the dictionary? Um, I don't think you really need them unless your tutor asks you to bring them in. But maybe if you have a little tablet, or maybe if you have a mobile phone, then bring it in. But the writing and research could be, could be, really, could be really useful. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It depends, you know, how heavy it is, or if you can be bothered. <laughs> or sometimes if you're staying on campus after the class to work, then yeah. you you might need it. So, but just be very, very, very careful with it because you it's an open campus. And we have lots of those teenage language students <laughs> with light fingers. <laughs> so um, be careful. It's an open campus. Okay. So we are 95 students, lots of teachers, and we're all over the campus. Okay? It's really important that you know how to keep in touch. The only way sometimes I have of contacting you is your Brooks email. Not your Hotmail, okay, your Brooks email. If your teacher is sick, I need to be able to contact you quickly. If there is a room change, there's a problem with your room, the computer doesn't work, I need to be able to contact you quickly and I will only ever use your Brooks email. Check it once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Okay, if you come and say, where's my class, I missed my class, Sorry, I emailed you on your Brooks email, okay? So make sure you check it every day. Miriam, again, as I said earlier, very important person, the centre for everything. You can always catch her. Academic advisor, I will tell you in a minute who is your academic advisor and their responsibilities. And we have student representatives. So hands up if you're level two. Okay, you will meet Vincent. Vincent is in the level two class. He is the student rep. If you are level four, okay, you will meet Belinda. She is your class rep. And level 3D, we don't know yet because you're a new class. So next week we will choose, or you will choose, who is going to be the student representative. Again, I'll tell you in, in a minute about responsibilities. So, remember that... Um, this is your Google at Brooks, so this is your Brooks email, this is what the login page looks like. Can you see here, what do I call this? Do you know what I call this? Don't say photo. Profile, picture profile? Yeah, it's an avatar. 
Do you know that word, avatar? Yes. It's called an avatar. So you can do this, you can upload a picture so that people can see you and recognize you. Because otherwise you just have this blank circle. When you're emailing somebody, you don't know who they are. All right? It doesn't have to be a picture. If you don't want to put a picture, you can put just a, a symbol or something which you feel represents you. But this is quite a nice thing to do. So again, perhaps over the weekend, you can upload a, a something for your avatar. So, student representatives, every class has one. They act as a kind of a link between the students and the teachers. So if there's a problem, rather than all of the students coming to the teacher, the student rep comes to the teacher, okay? Um, perhaps the teacher forgot to give some photocopies or handouts, they email the class rep, the class rep meets the tutor, they give them the photocopies, they give to all of the students. If somebody is absent in your class, they take the photocopies for that student. Okay? And also it's a good idea if the class rep has everybody's mobile phone numbers in case there's a problem or a room change or something like that. Where are you? Our test is starting in five minutes. Where are you? So again, they act as a kind of a, um, a link between um, the tutors and the, and the students. And also it's good for your CV. You can put on your CV, I was the class representative. <laughs> this class. Why not? So, I said that everybody has an academic advisor and you will see your academic advisor at least once in the six weeks, probably um, the middle of the course after you have done some of your formative assignments to see how everything is going. What's your progress? What are you finding easy? What are you finding difficult? Um, and maybe just to get some, some other advice. Um, but also, your academic advisor will have office hours. So every week, they will be available for you to see them without an appointment. Okay? If you need to see them more urgently, the best thing to do is to email them. Okay? Because obviously, uh, for example, I am an academic advisor. I don't sit at my desk all day waiting for people to come and see me. I teach and I have lots of other things that I need to do. So. It's a good idea, if it's not in the office hours, to email them. Um, not just academic support, but personal support. Again, life happens and maybe everybody is happy now, but maybe there will be some things which you'll find challenging while you're here. We can help. No problem is too small. I can assure you we have heard everything, all right? And sometimes just sharing and getting somebody to listen to your problem it makes the problem feel much lighter. Maybe I can't help you, maybe Miriam can't help you, but we can try to find somebody who can, okay? At the end of the course, if you tell us you had a problem, what can we do? We can't do anything, it's too late. So tell us when you're having or experiencing the problem. Maybe you need a reference. Again, we can help you for that. Maybe for your sponsor, maybe for a job, or maybe for a course, we can help you with that. So, who are the academic advisors? So, level two? Me. <laughs> level three, D? Me. And level four, Judy. Okay, so Judy is your academic advisor. And Judy is your listening and speaking teacher. So, you will, you will meet her. So, level two and level three, D. Um, here are my office hours, so every Monday from 1.30 until 2.30 or Friday 12.30 to 1.30, okay? I'm always available at those times. Judy is available 2.30 to 3.30 on a Tuesday and Wednesday from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, again, email me if those times are not convenient and we can usually find another time quickly. So I talked to you about Miriam, um, just to remind you what Miriam can help you with, personal issues as well, um, fees and finance, again she can direct you to the right people, accommodation, so you were asking about accommodation, again she can't help you directly with these issues but she knows somebody who can, 
or enrolment issues. I know this morning there was a big problem. What was that problem? I don't know. We don't know. This is the problem. We work within this machine called the university and um, it's very challenging at times. So sometimes you need to go and, and find um, support. Um, and also information about other pathways, courses, or courses um, at Brooks. Miriam can help you or direct you for help. So this is what I was talking about earlier on, your PIP page. This is where you will find your results. And also this is where your contact information needs to be up to date. So the address on your contact details is where we will send your certificate. So you must make sure that that is up to date. If you get a new mobile phone, change the phone number on the contact details. If your family ring up because they can't find you, they can't contact you, we will give them that mobile phone number. If it's wrong, then... Um, we, we may have a problem, so make sure your contact details are up to date. I know that Miriam talked about this this morning, but um, it's, it's, I just want to repeat it, that it's very important that you register with a doctor. Um, the reason is that if you are off sick and you have a visa, we may ask you to provide evidence of being sick, and you can get a doctor's note if you're not registered with a doctor, you can't get a doctor's note. And also, I think that most people think they don't need a doctor. And then, when they do need a doctor, they're not registered. If you're not registered, the doctor won't see you. Okay? And in the UK, you can't go to the doctor, sorry, you can't go to the hospital for a sore throat or a small problem. In the UK, people go to the hospital for special appointments or accidents and emergencies. The doctor, the general practitioner, GP, is where people go for the day-to-day -day small things that they need help with. Okay. Um, so this is just to remind you, if you're living in Brooks Accommodation, you can register with the medical centre in Cowley Road. Also, we have a dentist. You can go to the dentist here at Brooks. The dentist is above Starbucks along the colonnade. Okay. So, just to finish, um, some rules and regulations, um, just so that everybody knows what we expect. Um, attendance. Some people say, oh, how many lessons can I miss? Uh, none. <laughs> uh, we expect 100% attendance, and this is particularly important for students on Tier 4 visas. Punctuality, as I said, the class starts at 9 or 1.30, not uh, 9.10, 9.15, or 9.40, or 9.45. It's very disruptive for the other students who arrive on time and the tutor. There is a break during the class, half an hour. Again, it's half an hour, not 40 minutes, not 45 minutes. You can bring water and drinks and coffees and small snacks back into the classroom with you. That's not a problem. Language policy, well, you're here to study English. So if you don't speak English all the time, what's the point? What's the point? If you're speaking your mother tongue to other students in your class, what's the point? Uh, you're here to study English, and also it's not fair on the other students and the teacher who they don't speak your languages. Mobile phones, well, this is one of those situations where teachers are different. Some teachers will say, turn off your mobile phone. I don't want to hear your mobile phone. I don't want to see your mobile phone. And other teachers will say, Okay, have your mobile phone here, use it for a dictionary, or... So it's worth checking, um, you know, with the teacher what the mobile phone policy is. But again, if you're studying, how can you be looking at Facebook or WhatsApp at the, at the same time? At homework, well, as I said, just do it. We don't give it for fun. <laughs> well, maybe it will be fun. But um, yes, just do it because it can cause problems for the next classes. If you haven't done the homework, sometimes it's difficult to participate in the class. 
And finally, what's this word here? Plagiarism. Yes. So, yeah, there are lots of different um, forms of plagiarism, but one is cut and paste or copy and paste. The other is stealing. Okay. The other is pretending that this work is yours, but maybe your friend wrote it. Another one is duplication. So you use this for one module, and then you try to use it for another module. Another one is two students work together, and they have the same, the same work. But it's individual work. Your tutor will tell you when it's group work. Okay? Most work is, in, is individual. And the last one, which is becoming a really big problem, not just in the UK, all over the world, is essay writing websites, where you buy an essay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, very dangerous, very dangerous. Unfortunately, the university doesn't look at this in a very sympathetic way. If you commit plagiarism, it's bye-bye, okay? So it's very, very serious. Obviously, sometimes people make mistakes. You're all international students. You're working on your English. That's different if you make a small mistake. You forget the reference or you copy something too much similar to the original. That's different. That's a language mistake. You didn't have the intention to cheat, okay? <laughs> we know that. But if you just go out and copy a whole essay or purchase a whole essay, that's completely different. You have the intention. So there are slight differences, and we'll help you to understand that and show you how to avoid plagiarism. So, just a summary, we expect you to attend all your classes and be active. So, um, offer answers, work together with your partners. And um, please, please, please tell us if you're going to be absent from class. Um, and find out what you've missed. So don't come to the next class the next week and say, I didn't do my homework because I was absent last week, I didn't know. Be active, take responsibility. Talk to the class rep, get the photocopies. Get used to working together, okay? Mixed nationality pairs. Don't work with somebody who speaks the same mother tongue as you. Work with another um, student. Get used to studying for three or four hours per day outside of class. Check Moodle, use Moodle every day, and also your Brooks email. Avoid making appointments during class time. So if you have to wait in your flat or your house for something, or if you need to go to the bank, or if you need to go, don't accept the first appointment if you have class. Explain, I'm sorry, I'm studying, I have a class at this time, can I make another appointment? Because you have four hours in each day, and also Friday, a lot of the day when you can do those personal things that you need to do. Um, and obviously, please, please, please tell us, tell me, tell Miriam, tell your academic advisor immediately that you're having any problems. So, get used to working on your own, become independent, study for three to four hours, uh, try reading in English every day, newspapers, magazines, novels, online. Listen to something every day, the radio, movies, films, podcasts, online lectures. Socialise with each other. You are here to study, but you're here to build relationships and friendships that will last for a lifetime. So, mix with other students. Oxford is a fantastic place to be a student. There is so much for you to do here. It's unbelievable. And you have London, one hour on bus. Okay? So if you think Oxford's boring, don't worry, it's only one hour on the bus. So every hobby you can think of, there is something for you to do. And six weeks is a very short time. It will fly by and soon it will be the end of the course. So take your opportunity to do everything uh, while you can. And that's it. Enjoy your course. Have fun in Oxford, but also work hard and do the best that you possibly can.
That's it. Um, a little bit early. Good. If anybody has any questions.